Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're stepping away from the octagon and the ring, trying to see what works best and going back into the past. So, when it comes to street fighting and when your life is on the line, you need that very effective blow that ends things and at the same time keeps you safe and it's highly effective. So, a lot of the times, street fights they look kind of like uh, this valet tudo demonstrations you are seeing here it's very wild it's explosive people are swinging you know you have uh, people grabbing your uh, clothing and dragging you around it's not gonna look like a patterned fighter when you're a professional fighter or you know, someone who is trained you're looking for patterns you're looking for strategy between the two fighters trying to outplay the other fighter but in street fight there's none of that you don't know who you're fighting it's incredibly explosive it's incredibly wild and there's really no pattern so you really want that blow to do the most damage and as quick as possible or if it's not gonna do the most damage it's a way to get you to your grappling here you see you know the ducking and trying to go for the legs that's why I always advocate for a proper judo stance so let's take a look at the old strikes from jiu-jitsu slash judo so you have the swinging uh, hammer fist to the side which in my opinion is the best and it's my favorite you also have strikes on the soft tissues uh, whether it's the elbow the blade of the hand or a closed fist when it comes to the you know dense part of the face here uto between the eyes a closed fist is best done at close range because you cannot swing at such places you will easily break your hand. Kazumi here the hammer fist. You can hammer fist your table all day but with a closed fist you can only do it maybe a few times. So we get to again you're striking soft tissue so you can do a closed fist and these are things that the old generation have thought of. Again you want that one blow that really does the most damage so you can either get away or proceed to your striking or you know end things here Hickson in his self-defense unit explains that with this type of fist there's no chance to break your hand so it's again Kazumi on the temple notice it's the same type of striking um, here he explains open palm strikes are also very efficient you know the meaty part of the hand the tip of the fingers just jab the eyes a little bit make them as unstable as possible this is from the book dealing the first deadly blow link in description you can see it here you have the hammer fist you have those like two knuckles flaring out i believe these are for close range me for example i would never use them maybe a karateka or any other striker would kind of use them you have the blade of the hand in figure four um, number three I believe if uh, it's the you know fingers pointing kind of like the one where you are trying to jab the eyes but again I would say number two and number four are by far the best because you have the meaty part of the hand you will have very little to no damage striking and breaking your hand will be impossible but at the same time you will do a lot of damage either on the side of the neck or the temple let's see other illustration here you see the number three it is those knuckles on soft tissue again solar plexus and the pubic uh, area or the pubic bone where there's the muscle also it's a very sensitive area you have the open palm in figure six um, this is the striking surface as they show you again this is a soft part of your hand but it will be incredibly damaging on the nose on the side of the uh, jawline again we are dealing with very explosive environment no pattern you're not uh, having your hands wrapped and with covered with two inches of gloves so again we are not in the octagon or the boxing ring this is real stuff that the old generation have come up with and here you can see uh, Hickson undefeated in MMA still advocates for these things when it comes to self-defense and not so much the traditional patterned you know fighting with uh, gloves so you want to keep your hands as safe as possible here you see the strikes the low kicks um, with the ball or the heel 
to keep distance um, and at the same time will allow you to advance further into your opponent on the knee or on the lower part of the thigh it's very block it's blocking your opponent and it's startling them so you can get in upper body clinch or you can go to the legs i wouldn't advise going to the legs if you're not heavily experienced let's see here kyuzo mifune you have shirai striking with the with the side uh, hammer fist here you see him kicking the knee so he can get close and then a knee to the lower part of the backbone let's see it this is the kick very similar to what the gracies did later on and then he gets uh, to the back or you can clinch again then get to the back and from there you strike um, let's see here another example the uto ate same thing but this one he is aiming more towards the groin either with the ball of the foot or the heel keeping distance and staying away now here this is a little drill that Hickson talks about again link for the self-defense unit in the description below here is a little drill Hickson came up with you can do with your partner no gloves needed because there are no gloves just like you say there's no gi in the street well there are no gloves in the street as well um, here you can block the side of the head and now finally headbutts he says you should hit the upper part of the head with their lower part of their face not to the top because you will hurt yourself you can do it from the side and also front um, that's a great way of course to do a lot of damage especially if you have a big head uh, but when it comes to the strikes especially with the hands you want to keep it short you want to keep it uh, very quick and also keep your hands safe you don't want to break them and the kicks they're there to startle and also keep them at distance or striking very sensitive places such as the groin the pubic area and the solar plexus and the soft tissue of the abdominal uh, so this is why i believe that these things not only should always be practiced but also they should be always there in a constant program not just once a week during kata class or uh, whatever the drill that Hickson proposed is very good if you do it quickly and again you should be very much used to you know, striking in a way that is keeping your hands safe and dealing the deadly blow just like the book that's in the description if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was Shadi and as always Thank you for listening. Please, anything else, let me know down below. The book, as well as consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. Only your support would mean greatly, but my main content will always be on the channel here.